welcome. It's Monday night and it's Mission TV Live. I'm Natalie Wood and I'm so glad you can join me this evening. I also have my co-host, Luis Hyen. Welcome, Luis. Thank you, Natalie. You know, we, we, Friday, we were sitting together all week. We've been talking about whether or not to do a live this evening because with John gone, it's a little bit nerve wracking for all of us. There are some things that he does so well that we, we miss him when he's gone. And he's in Thailand right now. So we were, Friday we were together and we were just praying and talking about whether or not we should do a live. And we talked about some different options of what we should talk about. And we just decided, you know what, we need to do a live. Because we're doing them every Monday night, right? So you guys are used to it. So anyway, we decided to do the live Friday. And then Friday evening, the person who we'll have as our special guest drove in to GMI's property. And we said, you know, maybe this is God's idea. So we've got a special show. It's going to be full of surprises, I'm sure, for all of us. But God is in charge here. I want to start with a verse. Luis, I know you know this verse. It's Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm not going to ask you to quote it, but I'm going to ask you a question about it in Spanish in a minute here. I know all of us know this verse. And it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Luis, this morning you were telling me that verse in Spanish, and there's a word there that's different. Instead of saying it's the substance of things hoped for, it puts it a little bit more strongly. Can you tell yeah. me? Yeah, well, in Spanish I can tell you what it says. It says, uh, fe es la certeza de lo que se espera, la convicción de lo que no se ve. Okay, so translate the first part at least. So the, uh, gotcha. we use the word certainty of the things we hope for. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a little more... Um, strong because it's, it's you have a certainty that that's going to happen even though it's in the future yeah now sabbath we went to some different churches and we talked to some different people you want to tell us about what's the question we asked well we were thinking on talking about faith and uh we were asking people what well, what do they think is faith and we have some uh, people that we asked the question and they're going to tell us what they think faith is. Okay. The ingredient uh, to activate the power of God in our life. Faith is trusting in God when you don't see the end from the beginning. When you don't see how things are going to work out. I think faith is believing in what seems impossible and moving forward as if it were possible. Believing that he really means what he says and that he will always supply all my needs, even though a lot of times he does that by changing my idea of what my needs are. But it's, it's trusting God. It's being, even when, the, even when life is going hard, it's about trusting God. Faith is believing in something you can't see and acting on it. So there we have some definitions of faith from different people. And um, we want to talk about a little more about that. And um, I, first, I want to encourage you, if you have a question or a comment at any point in the, in the show this evening, I'd like to ask that you would call us at 423-413-7321 or email us at live at missiontv dot, sorry, live at missiontv.com. Or you can send us a tweet at um, live underscore mission TV, I believe it's the Twitter mm -hmm. account. So um, we, we would love to hear from you. And so if you have a comment you'd like to share, please feel free to call us or email us. That would be wonderful to hear from you. So Luis, we have a special guest this evening. And this is part of the walking by faith, working by faith thing that we talk about so often on Mission TV. You want to tell us a little bit about our, our special guest? Well, um, there's so many things I can say. Um, that's the privilege of working in a ministry is that you get to know all these missionaries. And, uh, but um, this special guest, we, can, we have a video that says a little bit of him. It shows, you know, what is that he does. And so I think let's, let's just let the video talk a little bit and then introduce him. Okay.
how do you survive as a volunteer? You know, it's kind of funny. It, it was tough for me really at first. And I kind of grow, I'm a whiner. I whine to God all the time, right? And uh, we get this statement in that shows us our donations every month that came in. And I hate opening the email. I'm always afraid. What am I afraid of? Right? That there won't be enough for the month. So here I am telling God how to do his, how to handle his money. The next morning I go to bed and I wake up in the morning and God's like, you know what, Jeff, why I'm reading my devotions? Why don't you figure out how much I'm sending you then? You know, you're griping about how much you're getting and you want fifteen hundred bucks a month every month at the beginning of the month. And that would just cover food and gas for the schools, right? So He's like, why don't you figure out how much you're getting? So I went into my, my little book there, my notebook, and I, my counting software, and I said, okay, well, let's figure it out. So I went from January to November, added up all the money that went through my hands. It ended up being $5,000 a month. You see, I'm such the great accountant, I had my budget all figured out, but God knew that I needed way more than a measly 1500 bucks a month. He wants, he's like, Jeff, hey, I'm doing way more than that for you. Quit your whining. Hebrews 10 talks about, but you have need of patience that after doing the will of God, you may receive the promise. You know, I always used to think it was just faith that we needed to, to receive God's promises, but sometimes I'm an impatient guy. So I like, I want God to do it right now, my way, you know, the way I want it and right away. But you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And if we're willing to step out by faith, believe his promises and have patience that he'll fulfill them, God's going to do it every time. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're you're, you're American, you're Latin American, you're whoever, God is going to do it, he is, and He's able. So we'd like to welcome Jeff Sutton at this time to the show. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. We're glad you could join us at the spur of the moment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> glad to be here. We know that you came here not intending to be, you know, on at all, but no, no. God had a plan. I Absolutely. Think. So, Absolutely. So we just heard a little bit of your experience with faith, and you shared a verse in there about needing patience. Uh -huh. I know you had told me that one a little bit ago. Did you have something more you wanted to say about that than what we saw already? Oh, I was just watching, watching the video, and I'm thinking, man, I, I, I'm a slow learner. Slow learner. Still, still going around the same, same thing, still wanting to God, still trying to tell him what to do. <laughs> In fact, uh, just, you know, it's amazing to see how God is so faithful to us. In fact, you talked about uh, how I just drove in. And, uh, you know, I was struggling with thinking, you know, God, how are you going to do? I've got all these needs, and what am I going to do? And, and uh, what, what is your plan? Like, uh, but i got to tell you, I'm, I'm getting more excited about seeing what God's going to do. And, and, and this time, actually, I, I ended up driving a, a motorhome across country, and we're going to use that to... We're going to sell it and, and use some of the, uh, the well, we're going to use the money and, and put in the mission work. And, and it, was, it was kind of one of the more creative ways that God has uh, provided for our needs, i got to say. So I, I just drove my family cross country for the first time in, a, in quite a nice motorhome. It was, it was quite an experience. <laughs> yeah. Just to be, people understand how big your family, you say your family, but how big is? Oh, oh my, my wife and I have, I have three children that still live at home. Yeah. What is the age of? Uh, my, my, my little girl, the oldest is seven, then we've got five, and then uh, four. So, yeah. So five of you in the motorhome. Yeah, and I, I said four, but it's three. My <laughs> wife will tell me about that later on. They're like, hey, you said four. And I, I got to confess, I'm bad with birthdays. So. Okay, well, he's really only three. <laughs> yeah, he's only the three. The little guy's only three. Yeah, yeah, better correct that now. Okay. So back to Hebrews and faith. You had a you had a verse that you shared. Another one that you were sharing with me. A little yeah, bit. you know it's interesting um, as we as we come up on our needs and we bring them to God. I don't know about you guys, but we I like to see immediate responses. And uh, you know, well, I'm an instant uh, everything instant. So you know, I'm praying for something and there's a problem, and boy, I want to have the the answer right away. And when we don't see the answer right away, oftentimes we get discouraged and we say, well, you know, the Lord's not answering my prayer or the Lord is, you know. But, you know, I got to tell you, the more I've been overseas, the longer, uh, I, the more I see, I should say, God answer those prayers, but in his time. 
you know. And so the verse is <coughs> Hebrews 6, 12. And uh, if you want to turn with me there, it's Hebrews 6, 12. And uh, it's the predecessor to the one that I actually mentioned in the, in the video. And it says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and what? Patience. And what do they get? They inherit the promises. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, man, if we have more, if I only had more faith, increase my faith. And uh, if I only believe more, but oftentimes we need those two ingredients. We, that faith and praise to inherit those promises. God has wonderful promises. He wants to do wonderful things for us. And uh, for each one of you guys, too, that are out there listening, God wants to do awesome things for you. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, that, uh, the story on the video about God providing the money and when I was whining about getting, you know, 1500 bucks a month and God was sending me, uh, you know, 5000 That's your story. That, that can be anybody's story. I'm, I'm nobody special. God can do that for anybody. And it was month after month after month you saw that. Yeah. Oh, man. And, I, and people ask me, they still ask me now, uh, you know, how do you survive and all these questions. And uh, it's still the same story. It's the same story. Like, I mean, I could tell you another one. Uh, it just happened to me just a few, <clears throat> a month or two ago. I... Uh, I, I'm, I'm working on a project in Belize. We're building a missionary training center, and uh, we, we were doing our test run class. And I have a container that's being shipped down. Now, <clears throat> uh, customs and things like that are always a, a nightmare in third world countries, you know. Uh, I have, I, in fact, I have stuff that's still in customs in, other, in Bolivia, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, and it's been there for three years kind of thing. Wow. And so I have this container arriving to port, and I got to get it out. Uh, I have like two days to get out of customs before class starts, and I have, but my, I, so that's one problem. But the other problem is, is I don't have the money for the shipping or for the duty. That's a whole other problem. And I have no idea where the money's going to, well, I had an idea, maybe where some of the money might come from, could come from, but wasn't coming from. I had a generator there, a big 30, you remember that generator I brought through here? I think you guys remember. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that big green one. Well, I ended up getting the power company to bring in power to the site. And uh, I wanted to sell this big green generator, so I tried to sell it. I set it out for months. Nobody, I mean, you know, people talked, and I had people say, oh, we'll sell it for you at a fee, and all these kind of things. And I wanted, I wanted to use that money to help import the, the container, but I never could sell it. Never could sell it. I mean, nothing happened. I was like, man, well, God must have some other plan. Well, then uh, I found a guy that said, okay, I'll sell it for you. I have a buyer for it, but I'm going to sell it for, I think, he said, I, I, let me think about the numbers here. I think I was going to get $4,000 for the generator, and he was going to sell it for $7,500. He's going to make $3,500 off of a wow. commission. I thought, well, well, that's, well, I guess if you want to do that, that's fine. I need to sell it really bad. So uh, the guy, he could never get his buyer to show up. And I was like, man, Lord, you got to sell this thing however you want to sell it. Sunday, a Mennonite rolls up in the afternoon and looks at the generator. I was there. I fired it up for him. I said, well, if you're interested, last Thursday somebody was supposed to buy it, but if you want to do it, let me know tomorrow morning. I gotta, I'm leaving. And, and Anyway, so he said he called me in the morning. Calls me in the morning at 7.30 the next morning. says, I want the generator. Can you deliver it on Friday? Well, I said, I can't deliver it on Friday because I, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I really need to, I need to have the money sooner than that because i got to get this container out of, out of port. He says, oh, no problem. I'll come by today, pay your wife, you know, pay and, and uh, pay cash and done. So, and, and by the way, that was for 7500 uh -huh. So I got the whole, and I needed all that. The Lord knew I needed it all to pay for the container and the duty and everything. So I, anyway, the story keeps going on about how the, how the container worked out. But, you know, uh, God, had a, God had a plan. And, and I, so, somebody told me this thing. I don't know where, he, where they told it to me from, but he says, uh, God is seldom early but never late. Seldom really, but never late. I don't know why it doesn't. You know, I think it'd be a lot easier doing it the other way. Like you had things yeah, you early. So. Yeah, I tell them that all the time. I say, well, why don't you just, if you're going to provide the money, why didn't you do it last week? It's a lot less stressful, right? Why wait till Sunday? Yeah, but then would we have faith if he did everything on our timetable? Would, would we have faith? I don't know. I, I always used to ask the Lord that, but uh, it's, it's interesting, the whole the patience portion of things. So now, um, in the video, you were, it says something that you were working in Bolivia, but uh -huh. you're not. 
No, I, I'm Chris, actually, okay. I, I, I coordinate the projects in South America, but I'm based in Belize now, we're working on a, uh, a volunteer training center. So we're doing a project that we're gonna, we're doing a, a training, we're gonna do two, three month courses in the year, and uh, it's a specific missionary training for uh, working as a volunteer in faith-based ministries. And so uh, it, it's, it's, it's really exciting. I know of nothing out there that's like it, and uh, we have a fantastic team, and the Lord is blessing. Uh, we have, uh, we're getting ready to start class in February, and uh, last year we had a piece of dirt with nothing on it. And I was, I one of those prayers that telling God how I should do things again, Lord, please give me like an old resort or something that's uh, already built up, already don't have to do all that stuff. And uh, no, no, he didn't. He gave me a piece of old, he gave me an old cane field, you know, <clears throat> grown cane. up to bush. Great. and. And it started from nothing. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to start from nothing. I want to have it all there. But he didn't choose to do that. And, but let me tell you, he's blessed. And now we have, we have like seven buildings built. And in the next six months, we're planning on building another seven. And we're going to start classes in, in, in February. It's really exciting what God is doing. And uh, the classes are going to be like, um, anyway, they're going to be the, the missionary training plus practical training. So mechanics, construction, agriculture, health work, and uh, education. So what is the name of your project? MOVE. MOVE. Yep. Okay. Missionary, what does it stand for? Missionary Outreach and Volunteer Evangelism. Okay. So okay. Uh, that's, the, that's the name of the school. Yeah. Uh, we are... Um, I don't want to talk specifically at the whole time about faith. Mm -hmm. But we can see that um, when you ask the question, anybody could tell you what faith is. Mm -hmm. Now... I believe you know what living by faith is. So what's the difference by me just telling you what faith is in living by faith? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I tell people about the, the youth, youth pastors and things that Christianity is not a spectator sport. You don't just, you don't go and sit and watch. It's not a ball game you go. You know, if you've ever played sports, which I've played a few, I, I, <clears throat> but let, let's say cricket. I don't watch cricket. I don't even know how to play it. I've never played it. Don't know anything about it. It's the most boring thing to watch. These guys doing a sport that you've never played. Now, I play hockey, and, you know, I'm much more uh, inclined to watch a hockey game than I would be to watch a cricket game. However, Christianity is not a spectator sport. If you're just sitting and watching and not experimenting the, 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 the realities of what it means to live out the Bible principles, uh, then, then it, 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 the meaning goes out of everything. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, I say that as a precursor to, uh, when I, especially when I talk about youth pastors and working with our young people. Young people need to experience what it is to serve God. God's service is awesome. He has wonderful things in store for us. And, uh, and you want to experience God's promises fulfilled in your life, you have to test them. You have to, you go out on a limb and you say, God, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to try your promise. You said you're going to do this. Well, I believe it. And I'm going to move. I'm going to do what I can about it. And, and, then, uh, and then I get to experience those, those things. Uh, I get to experience the results. I get to see the miracles firsthand. I, 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 a couple of times I get to ride on an airplane and I sit next to an atheist, right? It's my favorite thing to do because I love sitting next to him. Because all I do is I share with him my experience. I don't, I, don't, I don't quote a Bible verse. Oh, I said, man, you know, you couldn't believe the other day I almost got killled in a plane wreck, you know? And uh, I tell him this story. And they can't and, argue with well, you. Well, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, no, and, and then how God provides all our needs with finance. What are they going to say? It's an experiential uh, mm -hmm. Component. Testimony. Yeah, testimony. There you go. And so, and that can be for everyone. That is for everyone. Well, that's part of what we're saved by, right? Yeah. Well, the faith of Jesus. That's and true. The word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's that's very right. So, um, you know, that would be one of the things I would say it, it's critical. And and you ask me what's the difference? Well, I basically said, well, it's an important component of it. But you have the difference is, is you are actually experimenting them. You're going you're gonna to take a promise of God and, and move on it. Here's, here's something that people, that I, maybe I can, I, some people ask the how. 
Like if somebody wants to do a project or they want to do something for God, you say, well, how am I going to do it? Well, how am I going to do this or how am I going to do that? No, no, no. Don't ask how. Ask what? That's the question. Not, not don't, you know, we ask the how. The how is God's problem. The question is, is, God, what is it that you want me to do? Totally different perspective. So, uh, Luke, if we want to flip to another, asking that, that, with that thought in mind, asking God what? Let's, let's uh, actually, let's flip to Matthew. Matthew 24. Very interesting, very interesting dialogue that Jesus is having. Of course, we know Matthew 24 really well, right? I mean, we think about it as it's the, the signs of the times. It's, and, 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 you know, many, many people have preached the, the sermons on this, you know. But uh, we kind of skip off the last half of it. And, uh, in fact, it, it, it really starts <clears throat> with, with the, uh, let's see, let me, let me look here. Verse, verse uh, 40, I like to start with this one, and, because we kind of like to skip over it. And it says, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women grinding in the mill, and one shall be taken and the other left. And, you know, because of the, 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 the concept of a, uh, the rapture, people you know, use that verse quite a bit to, to, to advocate that, that, uh, that uh, theory. The, um, we kind of like to skip over it. But really, Jesus is talking about two classes of people. And if you keep reading, you're going to find you're going to find two servants. One <clears throat> is is uh, ready when his master comes. One is not. You have you have ten virgins. Five are ready. Five are not. You have the you have after that, and we jump into verse twenty five. I it's twenty four and twenty five are the same dialogue. You get into chapter I'm sorry chapter twenty five, and uh, then you have the talents. Some invest and some don't. And then you have the sheep and the goats. Two classes of people. And Jesus spends most of his time talking about these people. Spends very little time over the second, the signs. He spends most of his time talking about these people. So uh, I have you ask you a question. So of the, of the, of the servants, um, did they know their master? Did they, were they both waiting for him to come back? Yeah, they knew him. Yeah, they knew mm-hmm. him. And they, they were waiting for him. They were waiting for him to come back. Right. How about the virgin? Yeah. Same thing, right? They're all waiting for his... They know he's coming. They're looking for him to come. They're waiting. Some are ready. Some go and some don't. They're identical groups of people. When you look at them in the field, they look the same. And uh, anyway, there's, <coughs> there's uh, this, this verse here. It says... Uh, let's look at verse 40, uh, 45. Okay, real quick before we do yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to ask you if you'd like to call and ask a question or give a comment or something. Mm-hmm. If you would call us, our number is 423-413-7321. Or if you'd like to email, it's live at missiontv.com. And if you'd like to send a tweet, it's live underscore mission TV. So please call or email, and we'd be happy to take your comment or your question. Do not, do not feel that, um, that you interrupt him. We actually would love to hear from you. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. In fact, in fact, saying that, uh, if you have questions, you got projects you want to start at your church, or you want to go as a missionary, and you're wondering how and how to do all these things, uh, well, now's the time to call. Yeah. Yeah, we want to answer those questions, and uh, and if you have comments about, you know, everybody asks me, well, man, how do you go? How do you survive? How do you make it by by faith and and uh, you know all these things? And so now's your chance to to. Ask to call somebody. and ask yeah, him absolutely. Live. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, okay, so back, back, to, verse back to verse 45. 45. Okay. The question is, is, who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Doing. Yeah. Doing what? That's the question. What was he doing? It says giving them meat in due season. That's right. So did Jesus leave him a job to do? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, people ask me all the time, how can you be building a big, you know, 
uh, school buildings down there when the Lord's coming so soon. And by the way, brothers and sisters, I believe the Lord's coming soon. And, uh, but he's given us a job to do. And when he comes, he's going to find us right in the middle of it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, so is, this, is this servant all surprised? Mm -mm. Not at all. He was, you know, he was ready for him. So, uh, you know, that, that's, this, this, that's the faithful servant. You know, when his master comes, finds him so doing. Did he know when his master was going to come? No. No, I had no idea. No. no. But was he ready? Time. Yeah, he was ready. Yeah, because he was doing what, what Jesus left him to do. That's why I say, you know, the faith question, doesn't he? We always ask the how. It's not the how, it's the what. Hmm. What did he leave us to do? Are we doing that task? So, anyway, that, if they have questions, call. Absolutely. We're... We're, I want to answer any of the questions that you have. All right. So you mentioned a, a word in there, faithful. That, that implies something, doesn't it? I mean, is it, is it implying maybe a, a way of life, not just a one-time thing? Absolutely. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, when you look at someone who's faithful, uh, that's someone who stands at a post of duty. You ever have people you can depend on? Yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, there's a few people that I, I depend on, and I need them, and, and I trust them because they're faithful. They, they, you leave them a task to do. And it's done. And it's done. Yeah, you don't have to worry. No, no. I, sad to say those people are, are sometimes few and far between, but I, I ask myself, because I work, when, I, when I became a volunteer, I, I didn't see it as I, I, I quit working. No, or, or, or actually, I just changed employers. God is my employer. Now I work directly for God. So he's in charge of paying me. And, and he's in charge of making sure that whatever I do, am I, am, you know, think he's your employer. So he, he can look over your shoulder any old time he wants to. Right. He's, he's in charge of giving you the tools that you need to yeah. work with. Yes. Of giving you the... Funds, as you said, he provides for your needs, mm -hmm. but not just your needs, but the needs of your project. Sure, absolutely. And he's in charge of guidance, absolutely, and wisdom mm -hmm. to do that. Absolutely, and I'm responsible to respond to those resources that he gives me. I mean, you know, if you, if I'm an employee, an employee, and my I'm sitting down all the time and not doing the things that he said. Well, hey, I got this job for you, and this job for you, and this job. I have this happen to me <laughs> occasionally. You know, where I've got volunteer, or students, volunteers, uh, employees, whatever the case may be, and I find them sitting down on the job. Do you think I'm very happy with them? No. No, I'm not happy with them. I'm like, what are you doing sitting down? You know, you gotta, you, I gave you something to do. Why isn't it done? And I think that about Jesus, too, you know? Is he finding me a, that faithful servant? I asked in the beginning uh, about your family, mm -hmm. and it was with, with intention of asking you later, because... You know, you're talking all this being faithful. And a lot of people said, well, I have little kids. Um, and they say, we have to wait until they grow up. Mm. So how the being faithful, because um, a lot of people see us as uh, like irresponsible when we take mm. our kids with us to Mission Field because they well, we old but they start in the life and you're taking them away. Mm. So how do, you, how do you mix that? How do you say, well, I'm, I'm still faithful with my kids, with me, whatever God oh, sent me to? That's, a, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent question because, um, you know, when I first went, people did say those very things. You're being irresponsible. You're taking your kids overseas and how are you going to provide for their needs? What about college? What about, you know... Uh, uh, if there's a medical situation, what about all these issues? What if you get in a plane accident and you know something happens to you? What is your family going to do? So all these questions arise, mm -hmm. and I got to tell you, I, I, I wish people wouldn't ask those questions because I think God has decided that He was going to make an exhibition A, a out, <laughs> yeah, out of Jeff's life. Please don't. Oh, so oh, what happens if something happens to him? Oh, I'll show you. Well, what happens is, you know, I don't want to know. What, I know you can take don't care of me. me yeah, that question. don't ask me anymore. What if? He'll take me through them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got to say, 
that when I went and I started, and, and, and this is, there, there's a faith growth process here that remind me to come back to, okay? Um, I've had many events of those worst case scenarios. Mm. Um, somebody, somebody asked me, well, what happens if something happens to your family? I mean, what would you do? Well, uh, my first daughter was born at, at home uh, in Montana. The birth went smooth, great. Didn't cost me anything but a passport. And a month later, I was I was in, in back in Bolivia, and she's been healthy as a horse ever since. Never ha- never have any problems with this one. My second child, uh, my wife was 26 weeks uh, pregnant, and uh, her water broke. And we're out in the middle of the bush three days before school is supposed to start on a Friday night, 10 o'clock. And uh, you know I've done a lot of medivacs. It's, totally different when it's your own family you know so here I am I'm, I hop on a motorcycle run to town wake up all these people trying to get a flight out of there they don't want to let you go it's it's a lot of drug trafficking and things and flight is not a nocturnal airport you know and everybody mm-hmm. I said oh, listen I'm taking my wife to the the nearest city is like the distance from Chattanooga to Chicago mm-hmm. uh, that has any kind of medical uh, facility so um, <clears throat> I hop in the, I, I make the drug police inspect my airplane, they stamped a paper, I threw everybody in the plane and I, I took off and I still will never forget taking off out of that airport. We had two motorcycles on there and you know when you, when I lifted the nose and the little lights of the town, it's like flying into the abyss, you know, you, don't, you can't, can't see anything. anything for three and a half hours in my little single engine plane uh, going up to the big town and uh, that, that, was a, that was a tough experience. Um, she was bedridden. They, they put her on a bunch of different things and they uh, absolute rest. And then she, they, they did a C-section and she was born and she was two months in neonatal ICU. Uh, at that time, I was still flying. I'd, I'd fly sometimes 13 hours a day and then come back and then go down to the clinic and, you know, watching your child uh, in the balance. I wish I had a picture. She fit in my hand. She was just, you know, a, I'm not a medical guy. She's got all kinds of hoses and IVs and things, and she just looks like, I'm like, man, I, I told my wife, I think we're going we're gonna to bury her here. There's no way this thing can survive. She's going to survive. She's just, but she was a fighter, and uh, the Lord did a miracle, and I believe that uh, he has a big plan for her life, and she, she you know, she got better, we, and <clears throat> she came home. And uh, so God, God worked that situation out, but then you ask yourself, well, what about that bill? Because mm-hmm. I put her in the best private clinic in a city of a million and a half. That's where the, uh, like the embassy worker, the U.S. embassy workers and all those people are, are in that clinic. That's where they go. And so uh, I think the bill was, was like 40000 Now, you know, in the, the States, that doesn't take very much to rack up. Oh, that's a couple nights in, in, you know, in ICU, but uh, down there. But still, even as a missionary, 40000 where am I going to come up with $40,000? I got nothing. And, uh, you know, while she was in the clinic, you know, people helped and did different things. And then uh, um, after she got out, then she's out of the, you know, it's out of the limelight. People, she's okay, she's going to make it. But I still had, I still had quite a bill. I think I had like $20,000 or, you know, on numbers. And so I had to kind of put a, slapped a lien on some asset that we had there to pull her out so they could, and I told them, listen, in X amount of time, I'll pay you. I made some payments, and then uh, later on, this, year two, this was, this was a, I think it was 08. This was one of the most difficult years of my life. That happened, and then I, we did a, a missions congress in Mexico, and that's, the, that's that story on the DVD of the plane accident. That happened after that. Hmm. But before I had the thing paid off, now I have a whole other catastrophic event in my life. It just, just huge. I thought the Lord must, must despise me. I don't know what I've done, and uh, you know, just, just huge stress levels. But one of the things that haunted me that I was always thinking about, I was like, so okay, God, you worked it out for me. You know, I went up and I got in a clinic and I, I spent this money. But what happens if something happens to a Latin American? You see, I, I, I believe God's the same for everyone. Mm-hmm. And so I tell Latin Americans, go be a volunteer. God will provide mm-hmm. for your needs. He'll provide for them in a crisis. or he'll, he'll t- It doesn't matter what the situation on is. He'll, he'll, on a daily basis, he'll take care of you. 
And uh, so that question haunted me. So, okay, well, what happens if something happens in Latin America? Can God take care of that bill too? And now I, I shouldn't ask God that question either. I hope that wasn't the reason that he decided to allow me to have a plane accident or any other situation. But in that, if you, and for those of you watching, if you get a chance, I don't know where you can find the DVD. Do we have it online? It's well, Mission in um, YouTube, you can find Having Nothing, Having It All. Having Nothing, Having It All. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. so. And also, if, they want, if you'd like the DVD, you can call us here at Mission TV, 423-413-7321. And, you know, we'd be happy to have it sent out to you. And then you can watch the whole thing. There's actually like five hours worth of video. And yeah. various missionary stories, not just Jeff's stories, but lots of different missionaries. And um, so please feel free to call. And again, if you have a question, you don't have to be on the air. They can write the question down and, and send it to us. And so if you have a question, you can feel free to call also. And I was told that I gave the wrong Twitter account. It's mission TV underscore com. So please correct that. It should be on the screen and the email as well, live at missiontv.com. So sorry to interrupt there, Jack. Yeah, no, no problem. So uh, when this when this accident happened, okay, and I, I can't tell you the whole story of the accident or how it all worked out, uh, but you can get it at the video. So the uh, we had a force landing off an, off airport in the middle of the night in a single engine pressurized uh, Piper Malibu. Uh, everybody was in the hospital within 15 minutes. We, we were outside of a small uh, community. Uh, and then <clears throat> two weeks later, they were, one, of the, one of the passengers was injured. She was a, a young lady, uh, Lily, Lillian Chavez, Baca, from Limones, Mexico, just south of Cancun. Uh, she was sitting in the back, and she had, uh, from the seatbelt, she had an internal intestinal lesions to her lesion. Uh, internal intestinal and intestinal lesions. I can't say all that stuff. I'm not. That's for my wife to say all those things. She's the nurse. Okay, so anyway, they did surgery and uh, right away. But then what I didn't, they didn't know and she didn't know and we didn't know is that she had, she had fractured her sacrum, which is right there on the spinal cord, and she had nerve compression and she had local paralysis. So she didn't know if she could have, you know, uh, be able to the bodily functions and all these kind of things. And so uh, they... they I, I had actually been there two weeks. Her mom was coming the next day. I had flown out. I was on an airplane leaving Nicaragua, headed back to Bolivia. And they call me, and, and uh, one of our volunteers, who's a nurse practitioner, went to see her. And she's like, well, we've, got a, we've got a medivac her. She has this nerve compression. We've got to take her to the States, or she's got to go to Mexico, and we've got to do this. Mm -hmm. And it has to happen right now if it's, it's going to be reversible. In other words, she, she'll recuperate her bodily function. So um, I'm like, <laughs> How are we going to do that? And so the people get on the phone and they start calling, and the, you know, a uh, Learjet Medivac is twenty grand. Hmm. Well, I didn't have twenty grand. I can tell you that right now, and I don't think anybody else that I knew had twenty grand to just fork out for a Learjet Medivac. But I just want to tell you that that girl got on a Learjet and went and had the had the, the surgery. It was done, and somebody paid for it. Hmm. And and a, and a thank you to those people who helped with that. It was, it was a huge blessing, but God's people responded to that. And this is for a girl that's just, you know, she's from Limones, Mexico. Anybody know where Limones is? I don't think, you know. It's, it, it's not somebody who's, you know, famous and has all these resources. Yeah, she doesn't have a lot of mm -hmm. people that Yeah, but she knows. can God provide for her needs? Oh, yeah. A absolutely. Absolutely. No, you said something earlier that's kind of interesting. Because you're saying, can God provide for all our needs? But then you said, I didn't have any money. I'm a missionary. Yeah. That's right. So it's the perspective there that well, that's, you don't have anything. Yes. But the one that you work for absolutely. can do anything. I know. And that's, <laughs> and that's kind of crazy because, you know, I, I, I got to say that God has blessed me beyond all measure. Like, okay, so I don't own a house in the States and I don't have a car and I don't have a college fund for my kids and I don't have a retirement plan. People say, well, how can you not have a retirement plan? That's crazy. You know, what are you going to do when you get older? I said, I... Didn't have one when I was 21, 22 when I started. And if God could take care of me when I'm 22 when I first started, and then now I, I better not. I've been, I've been around <laughs> a little for older a little, than now. that. I'm a little bit older than that. Not much, but a little bit. It's kind of sad. I, I left the 20s club the other day, and I felt sad about it. But you know, you got you got to get old sometime, I guess. Yeah. So so, but if God can do it when I was in my 20s, and He can do it when I'm in my 30s, 40s, and my 40s, 50s. you think He's going to have a problem when I'm in my 80s? I don't think so. 
Mm-hmm. Now, people say, well, that's just too extreme. But I say, I, when God says, take no thought about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink. For all the Gentiles worry about all these things. Mm-hmm. You don't worry about that. What am I supposed to worry about? This is seek, seek first, first the kingdom of God. And some people say, well, it's an, he doesn't mean it that way. No, he means it right just the way he said it. No. <laughs> why didn't he, he write it? You know, why did he write it that way, way if that's not the no, way No, and that's it. not just one verse. That's not one verse. It's like six verses there that he talks about all that. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. No, he's got us, he's got us taken care of. And, uh, but we like to worry about those things, don't we? We like to worry about those things. In fact, I'm going gonna, gonna to jump to another thought. Uh, okay. about that and that's in Luke let's flip to Luke 21 and uh, you know <clears throat> let's see I'm in Mark Luke Luke 21 and one of the most people don't realize that the danger of this uh, problem and, and, and I, I struggle with it too you know there's a there's a quote that someone shared with me they actually wrote a song worry is blind and cannot discern the future but Jesus sees the end from the beginning so we don't have to worry because he knows everything. I, I know. And, you know, I got to tell you, I, I need this, like, this is a topic that I need to talk about. And people say, oh, yeah, this is good for you because you, look at you, you're doing all this faith thing. It must be easy, but I could never do it. Easy. They don't realize. I'm like, I love to worry. I just worry and stress <laughs> about everything. It's my favorite thing to do. So I'm worried about, well, how am I going to do this and how am I going to pay for that and all these things. I remember I flew this gal. Uh, she was a volunteer for a little while with us. And uh, I, I think she's still working with us to some level. And she's like, man, I, you know, it's so easy for you. I'm telling all these stories, but I could never do that. I thought, ah, you don't know me. <laughs> it's not like easy? that. Easy? Yeah. No, and, and, and I, I, I stress out about all the things, all these things all the time. But that's really not the plan. The God's plan is we leave those things in his hands. And, uh, and I'll tell you how we do that in a little bit. But I want, to, I want to talk to you about why it's really important. Luke 21. And uh, there's a couple of things that when we look at uh, Jesus' second coming and being prepared for it. You know, I know I have friends when I grew up that prepared for the second coming meant you had food in your basement. Now, that's not, I'm not saying that's bad. But they thought, you know, we've got the time of trouble coming. There's an economic collapse happening. You need to be prepared for his second coming. So we're going to have provision. But uh, it's interesting that Jesus, when he looks at the second coming, he says, watch. And some people think, well, if when the second coming, you know, the, the things are going to get tough. Well, I need to watch my money. I need to pull it out of this and put it into that and try and, you know, make provision for myself. That's not nothing what the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about this. Jesus gives this warning. 2134, it says, Take heed to yourself, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with, I say surviving, you say surfeiting, I heard you say it. I don't know how to pronounce the word. And drunkenness. Well, that's number one. And a lot of people in this world are out for just entertainment, to have fun. I mean, that's what we do. We go on cruises, we buy snowmobiles, dirt bikes, boats, you know, whatever. And, you know, people say, well, those aren't bad. They're not bad, but that's what consume our lives. Mm hmm. TVs, Game Boys, whatever, you know, sports. There's lots of things that we consume our lives with in entertainment. And Jesus says, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts become overcharged with surviving. I read in Steps of Christ the other day, you know, how do we know of Jesus, you know, who, who, who loves us? And she says, who has your heart? Who has your heart? Who do you love to talk about? What do we like to talk about? What do we like to, uh, what are we uh, passionate about? Hmm. You go down the street and you hear kids talking, what are they talking about? We go to church in the foyer, what are we talking about? You know, we eat potluck. I mean, I, I gotta say, if you wanna see what, I, I'm gonna talk about airplanes, you know, boy, I love airplanes and this and that. No, I, I really, but I really want my conversation to be about Christ and his work. Lest your hearts become overcharged with surprise and drunkenness. And then there's the next one. Which really is, it's like a bullet right between me, or the, uh, a bat right between the old eyeballs, because this is a tough one. It says, hmm. and the cares of this life. Now, who doesn't fall into that trap? In other words, what consumes our thoughts is how are we going to survive? How are we going to make the bill? How are we going to you know, get our kids through school? Uh, I've got my kids in an in a, in Adventist school, and man, Lord, I don't know how to make it happen. And, and you're, we're stressing out, and we're worrying about these things, and we're working more, and 
or you can say to the missionary, I, well, I'm trying to make my project go and uh, you know, fix these problems and I'm working late and I'm working hard and I don't have time for Jesus. My devotional life goes down. Well, that's what he's saying. He said, take heed to yourselves lest you get overcome by these things, the cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. Like so, we're not ready. So you could say we could be working even for God and not ready. Not ready. Wow. And that is just, uh, it says, For as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Jesus says, Watch, therefore. And people, I, I know we remember that word because if we read our Bibles at all, Jesus is always telling us to watch, 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 watch. But he's not saying watch CNN <laughs> <laughs> or Fox or any of the other news channels about what's going to happen. That's not what he's saying. He's watch your own life. Because if your heart becomes overtaken with the cares of this world or surviving and drunkenness, that day will come upon you unaware. You're mm. not going to be ready for it. Wow. Well. We, we do have a question from one of our viewers here. Are you ready for a question? Fire away. <laughs> Actually, there's two. This Good. one is, is there a difference between getting saved and getting to heaven? Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Are the requirements different, or is there... Is there a difference between getting saved and getting to heaven? And I'm guessing getting saved, like the people out there say, well, I, I'm saved. You know, like that means I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's. I, I think that's kind of. Because a lot of people know, say I'm saved, to me. but get into heaven. Is, is that. Boy, I'm, I'm, my, the wheels are turning in my brain to think about, a, <laughs> think about an answer. It'd be nice if we had them. Uh, how some of the other people, they got the, the panels there and, and, <laughs> yeah. the, and all those things that they're helping them with. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, 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 I think you touched on it briefly a minute ago, that we could be working for God and not ready. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think, I think that's part of the answer to this question is that we could be claiming to be God's children and not be ready to be saved because we're not doing what he's saying here. Oh, absolutely. And there's, there's, there, here's we're a, consumed by the cares of this world or we're watching CNN or we're... Hmm. Yes, in fact, um, here, here's, a, here's an interesting... Uh, uh, John chapter 223, it comes to mind as we ask this question. And this is a reflective question that we... I, I go back to and, and we'll talk about it again. Uh, and he... This is amazing. He says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. And it's interesting the reaction Jesus has to this group of people. So they believed in his name. You know, they say, Oh yeah, I believe, I believe. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. He knew them. They <clears throat> what happens is, is that you know, a lot of people will say, Oh yeah, I believe. And they'll show up at church. They'll, they'll do the religious thing. Even they might even go as a missionary, right? Mm -hmm. But Jesus doesn't have your heart. He doesn't, you're, not, Jesus, you're not letting Jesus transform your life. And that transformation process is a, is a painful process. Uh, I realized when I went as a missionary, I just started school. That's all I did. Jesus school. <clears throat> and he's got a lot of work to do on me. I thought I was a nice guy, and I figured out I was a jerk, you know, real fast. And uh, and I still, you know, he's still working on me, and it's still a painful process. And I'm a slow learner. I I hope I, you know, he'll he'll keep helping me advance grade by grade, uh, you know. So so going back to that question, who has your heart? How do you how do you know? Who are you passionate about? Right, you like you said about? earlier. Yeah. What? Who do you like to talk about? What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, I, and I gotta confess, you know, I can I could tell you airplane statistics here, tell you this airplane has a range of this, and it can carry this much, and it'll do this, and it has this engine, and you know, and I love airplanes because that's what I do. And but, you know, if Jesus doesn't have my heart, well, I can fly all the airplanes in the world. It's like Paul says, if we have not love, it's nothing. So it's not. 
Christianity is not a nominal thing. It's not just a spectator sport. It's not something we just put on our lips. It's our lives. So how do we start that process? This is something that I want to go back to. So you say, well, <clears throat> I'm not in the position to go buy an airplane with $2,000. You know, I don't, want to try, I don't want to start trying some big project like that. Mm -hmm. I don't have the faith for this. Well, you don't start that way. That's, that's, the, the, that's the reality. You start with what you got. And you start out by, <clears throat> and then I'm going to talk about a few of these principles. We talked about patience was one of them. There's another one that I can add to it. But uh, you start out small. When I, went out, when I first started, I, I made a deal with God. I had some money. I, I don't know, not a lot of money. I sold a car, and I had maybe three or $4,000 when I went down as a missionary the first time. And I blew that money in a month or so, not a month. I, it was gone in six months. A short I, time. Yeah, it was gone. You know, because there's so many things, you know, so many needs, you know. That they need this and they need that and the money doesn't last mm -hmm. at all. But I only had to worry about about a hundred bucks a month. A hundred bucks a month? Well, that's nothing. I mean, that's what food, Bolivia is cheap living. It doesn't take anything. I'm living out of school, so I don't have rent. I don't have anything. I just got to worry about a hundred bucks a month. And that was kind of stressful even then. I was like, man, you know, Lord, how are you going to provide? Because you were just money? starting. Yeah, I was just starting. Then, then <clears throat> I, I went down to start an aviation program. And they asked me to start a high school. And I got to confess, never been to a boarding academy. Know nothing about boarding academies. And if I had went to one, I'm sure I'd have lasted about a week because it kicked me out. Because I know at the junior academy, they were glad that I left. <laughs> I, I knew how to write sentences really good. I will not shoot spit wads at the teacher kind of thing. You know? <laughs> one of those kind of kids. And so uh, I thought, man, they got the wrong guy, but they asked me to do that. And so then my monthly bill went from the, the $100 a month to like $1,500 a month. I was like, you know, how am I going to, how is this going to work? You know, of course, you know, GMI, the, the organization, they, it, it operates a little differently. It doesn't, you know, it's not like the organization just hands me over 1500 bucks a month to run the program. You know, God has to provide that some way. And that's that whole story about, you know, I went nine months and I was like, man, this is stressful. You know, I don't know how much money I want to get in. I don't know, you know, and these kids are, they're eating machines. They eat a lot of food. And teenagers. Yeah, they're all teenage <laughs> boys that can eat rice like it's going out of style. I thought I, thought I was in China when I went there. Anyway, <laughs> these guys eat a lot of, eat a lot of rice. And uh, I'm like, you know, Lord, how are we going to provide them with these? And then I was like, God, can you, wouldn't you at least... You know, instead of sending the money in the middle of the month, and you know, we get an email every at the beginning of the month, which is a video I didn't really talk about, but it, we get an email monthly. And I still get this email. And by the way, I still don't like opening it. I don't like opening it. It's stressful. How much am I going to get? Now I have to, it's worse because I don't even have to, I, I don't get to wait till the end of the month. I got the, the poor accountant, he hears from me every week. How much do I have? How much do I, have? I need this, that, the other thing, you know? And it's terrible. But, you know, uh, and God would do these things, and He had some, you know, little miracle or big miracle or some. Cre He's really, really creative about how He provides the money. You know, He doesn't want to do it in a boring way. That'd be way too boring. Look at the flowers. He likes to be diverse in His ways of providing for us. So He does all these wild things. And, uh, it says a thousand ways. Yeah, he does. And I was like, why don't you just use one consistently? That'd be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> then I could know what to expect. Yeah, this would be so much but better. But faith would be out the window. Yeah, you know, that's what, so I'm good at giving God advice, but he doesn't, seldom does he take my advice, and he tries to change me around to see it. And, and that's where he was. So, so, and then God's like, hey, listen, I'm, uh, that's where I felt impressed to open up my accounting program and look at it, and he's providing so much more money. You know, way more than I needed. He provided more than what I needed. And uh, that, that, though, that experience of seeing God work it out over and over and over and over and over and over today, still today, he's still doing the same thing, makes me now think, you know what, I'm kind of excited to see what God's going to do uh, next week. I don't know what he's going to do. Just like that generator. Well, he's got some plan up his sleeve. I know he's going to do something kind of surprising. And sure enough, boy, he worked that out that way. But, you know, I, I don't go into generators. You know, I'm not going to become a generator dealership and think that that's the way God's going to provide my money every time. I, I don't want to ask you a hard question. Uh -oh. but um, You do. <laughs> but uh, I, I will in a way. Okay. Well, <laughs> so do answer. you think that by living as a missionary, uh -huh. that, I mean, do you think that 
this character of faith and to be faithful. Could you develop a, the same just being a regular member of the church? Or you have to, you know, we, we are Mission TV. Uh -huh. And uh, we all have experienced mission. And do you think we need something else? Oh, absolutely. Just, just, or just being in the church. Well, do you want to jump in and say something? I thought no, you, oh, okay. I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, so, well, that's a that's a great that's a great uh, it's a good question. You know, is it a prerequisite? Do we have to have this experience? Okay. First of all, let me let me define something. First of all, a missionary is not someone that crosses some border. A missionary is a person who it's a lifestyle. Your mission is sharing Christ with others, whether you're on the sidewalk or in an airplane or you're on a bus or or whatever, and you're in your business. I love what I do because people ask me, so what do you do? Well, actually, let me tell you what I do. I'm a volunteer missionary, and they're like, what? You know, and so it gives me an opportunity to share Christ, right? But you know, uh, if somebody asks you, what do you do? Well, actually, I'm a Christian. I live for Jesus. What are you gonna do? Well, yeah, people maybe don't wanna say that, <laughs> but you know, can people see that in your lives? Is that your passion? And, and so that, a person who's passionate about sharing Christ in whatever line they do, because some people think, that uh, as a missionary, I do evangelistic series, and I fly, and I do a lot of medivacs, and I'm you know saving people out of jungle, and I get to do some of that. I I do do a little bit, but you know most a lot of like I'd say 80% of the work is normal normal work. So I build, I'm a framer, I'm you know I'm I'm you know sheetrocking a house or I'm fixing something that's busted or you know it's a lot of like hard manual labor. It's pay of the worst of all the jobs I do, though, i got to say, is paperwork. Oh, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. I don't like paperwork. You know, in, the, in all these countries, they've got lots of bureaucracy, and you have pounds of papers to do anything, and that's the cross I must bear. And, uh, but it's normal stuff, right? So how do I share Christ with the, well, if I'm in the minister's office talking about something, well, I'm talking about Jesus. If I'm, if I'm sitting in the waiting room next to the person, well, man, that's an opportunity. I need to tell them about Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. And it's just normal stuff. So, so that's that. Okay, so that let me. I define missionary <laughs> stuff. I'm going to get around to this at the end of it here. But there's another component that we must have, and this is this faith experience that you're talking about. Do you have you tried Jesus? Have you tested him? I want to flip to something. Let's look at Revelation three. We're going to go there, and 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 because I, I don't want to just give my ideas, I want to base them on the Bible. The Bible is really clear about who we are. And the more I've been a missionary, the more I realize that people are blind to their own condition. I, I love to hear people complain about other people. Oh, they just complain about so-and-so, he's so like this, and so-and-such and such, it's like this. And I think to myself, I'm like, well, you're blind to who you are. Because you've got your own set of problems that you don't see. But we not, it's like it's this. It's the beam. Oh, yeah. The well, yeah, kind of like that. So, <laughs> so let's just use an example. Everybody's like, oh, man, these guys just trash the vehicles down here. They're running them down the road, and they're beating them hard. And, and if the people would take care of stuff, okay. So that person says that. But really, they're the ones who trash the vehicle, but they don't know that themselves. They think they treat it good. I hate driving vehicles because I know I'm a bad culprit. But I have to fix everything I break. So that helps me drive them a little bit slower, but I'm just saying uh, I, I'm, I know I'm equally susceptible to the same problem. But let me, let me show you what we have here. In Revelation 3, we have a group of people, which we know very well because it's us. And uh, let's start in verse 17. It says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, that's a terrible sickness. I mean, I, I hate going to the doctor, right? I, I, I don't, I've been to the doctor like five times in my life. Don't go. Afraid of them. Uh, I don't like needles. I, I, I don't know that stuff. I'm not going to go to Now, if I don't like to go to the doctor, even if I get a little sick, I'm not going to go. I'm going to have to be on my deathbed to go. Very, very sick. Do you think I'm going to go if I'm feeling okay? Mm. Never. Not in your life. I'm fine. So how do you get fixed where, you know, if you have a disease, but you feel there's no symptoms, you feel good. Well, how do you, what's the cure? Well, that's the danger that these people are in. They think they're okay, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And so I, I say to myself, well, God, that's a pretty big problem, and I'm one of those people. Mm. So I think I'm good, but I'm not. Like, I'm a good missionary, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a volunteer. I'm down there doing all these good things, uh, flying people out of the bush, you know, preaching the gospel. I must be good. Must be all right. But 
He says, well, by the way, you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So what do you need? Well, he gives us some advice in verse 18. That's what I love about God. See, he doesn't just point out the problem, but he points out the solution. See, isn't that awesome? So he gives us a solution. He says, counsel, I counsel that thee buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes have that thou mayest see it. Okay, so three things. He gives us these three things, right? Well, the, the last two I kind of understand. White raiment, we know that white raiment in the Bible is the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. We need Christ's righteousness to cover us. We need eye salve. And um, the Holy Spirit, what is his job? He convict the world of sin, right? He makes us see our condition. He brings conviction to our heart. So I understand these two things. He helps us see our, our true condition. I'm glad the Holy Spirit's doing this work. But then I, I ask myself, what in the world is gold tried in the fire? Buy it. You need to buy it. By the way, you don't just, it doesn't come to you automatically. Very interesting. So we're going to flip to another place in the Bible where it talks about gold. And uh, we're going to go to 1 Peter 1, 7. And it, it, we're going to make a big circle here about what we're talking about. It's going to, we're going to come right back to where we started. But we'll start in 1 Peter 1, 7. It says, did you find it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than what? Than okay. gold. That, that perishes, perish. though it be tried with fire. So what does the Bible compare our, the trial of our faith to? Gold in the gold fire. Tried in the fire. Absolutely. So Jesus is telling the church of Laodicea, listen, you need trials. That's your solution. Now that sounds like a terrible solution to me. And, oh, by the way, buy them. So... Okay, so when you step out by faith and you say, okay, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to choose to do this and make myself uncomfortable. We stretch our comfort zone. And by the way, when I chose to be a missionary, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I knew I was choosing a trial, but I had no idea the trials that may would come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he, he gets us through them. But the trial of your faith. So um, we have to choose trials. We need those trials. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, we're going to jump to one more verse. Let's keep going because I'm going to finish. We're going to end up in a big circle. As I told you, we're going to end okay. up. James chapter 1. Now, now you know where I'm going to end up, don't you? Do you know that verse? James chapter 1. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Does yours say various trials? No, mine says diverse temptations. Diverse temptations. Knowing that the trying of your faith work is something very important. What is it? Patience. The second ingredient. Isn't that interesting? See, for our faith to grow and for us to receive the promise, we have to have that second ingredient. And I always wrestle with the Lord. I'm like, Lord, because i got to be honest with you, I don't say, oh, Lord, praise the Lord. Somebody asked me, how are you doing? Praise the Lord. I had a trial today. It was awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> it was just a terribly trying day. <laughs> I, I really, I count. No. I'm just joy. Do we do that? No, we don't do that. What do we do? We whine about it, right? Oh. Lord, help yeah. me to help it to go away. You know, when is he gonna? You know, the prayer requests and things like that. You know, we don't want trials. But when we test the Lord and we have that experience and we see God working in our lives and we choose those trials, when we choose to stretch our comfort zones to work for Him, He uh, He blesses us and He grows us and He transforms us. That's His That's His method that He does it. But we have to choose that. Hmm. You know. I pray a prayer, and I, I do it because I know I'm hard-headed, and I'm a slow learner, and God's got to work like extra overtime with me. But I tell him, do whatever it takes in my life. Do whatever it takes. I want to be in the kingdom. I, I give you permission to send whatever you feel necessary to send my way. I know that I, I can trust the Heavenly Father's hand, and I know that he does send trials, difficulties. I, I've experienced them, and I'm experiencing them. But there's joy in the service of the Lord. I, I, I can tell you that I, I'm the most full uh, person. I feel so, well, I love what I do. And uh, I love working for the Lord. And I love seeing his miracles firsthand. And knowing that that trying of my faith produces patience, which that is an ingredient that I need to receive his promises. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of a George Mueller quote. He said, trials are the very food of faith. Mm. 
It's like we need them. Yeah. Yes. For faith, for patience. To, to have that, that to have that experience. Experience. Uh, and so you ask me, is it necessary? Well, I, I first of all say that we're all missionaries. That's a, Jesus said, you know, to give meat in thy household in due season. That's what the servant. That's that's the what. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> there's lots of ways to do that. And you have to ask God specifically, what is it that you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Right? I can't tell you that you've got to go to Bolivia or you've got to go to you know, Laos or wherever else you, you, you may think. It may be, you know, it may be uh, Chicago. It may be in New York. It may be right across your street. Maybe your family. I don't know. That's the questions that you, know, you guys have to ask God, yeah. the what, and let him take care of the how. That's for sure. Uh, and he will. Yeah. Um. We're definitely going to have to invite you over again. Yes. We are um, actually way over yes, way our over time. time. Oh, are we? Okay. We, um, but th- this is what happened when, when you talk about Christ and your experience. Mm. And, um, mm. and I really would like you to come back. Yeah. Well, the hard thing is to know when. When. You know, but, I might just but, drive in or fly yeah. in or pop <laughs> but, in anymore. Um, well, let us know. Yeah, a not, little ahead next time. No, knowing did, that we would like to have you did back. Did you again. finish that circle you were talking about? That's, that's the circle. It'll work. Okay. Yeah. That's good enough. So um, thank you very much mm-hmm. because um, we are missionaries. We are, we've been in the mission field, uh, but our main work is here. Mm-hmm. So it's always refreshing to yeah, hear uh, from other people. And, and um, I just want to tell the people that um, we have to buy. That's a hard thing. Trials. And as a missionary, I think, is, 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 a, is a wonderful thing. When you see God working in, in, in your life every day. So um, next time you're in town, definitely come back and share with us. Okay. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, and, and it's been really nice uh, having you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, it has. And it's been really nice having you with us as well. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the Mission TV Live show. Until we see you next Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern, please consider what we've studied tonight and buy the gold. God bless you.